Hey, how's it going? I'm Anthony Ottawas. This is the Adventures in 3D with Anthony. And I figured out something recently that I wanted to share with everybody. Sharing it helps me keep it in mind. I wasn't able to easily find this elsewhere, so hopefully it helps somebody. So when we want to do multiple animations in Web3D stuff, Reactor Fiber, 3JS, whatever, we're going to need to stash multiple animations in Blender. And I found some quirks with that, and I didn't even think it was very obvious or intuitive how you're supposed to stash multiple animations. So we're going to go through that really quickly. So I've got this test scene set up here. I've got a knob and that is parented to a plane and that is to mimic some realistic scenarios where you can have sub components that you want to animate, uh, but still keep its relationship to something else so that you can easily move everything together. This has multiple action, has multiple actions. Each action you can think of as an animation. So I've got this uh, small rotation left and then I can go to the rotate, the other rotate, and it does a small rotation right. The axis is a little off for its local rotations. I don't think that really affects our tutorial here. Notice I'm in the action editor. That's going to be important. In order to make another animation or another action, we need to hit the new action tab. It's important to name it because you're going to have to call things by name in the code. So I'm just going to call this rotate three. In rotate three, I'm going to change the rotation in this keyframe where uh, I will let's see, rotate it and we're going to rotate it on its local Z axis. And we'll just rotate it a little further than, than before. Hit I, save the keyframe for the rotation and you can see it's doing a little wobbly uh, rotation. Now here's the important thing. When you're doing multiple actions, and you, you hit this, this new item, you wanna make sure you hit the shield on it to make sure that it can export. It's not going to get lost when you do your GLB export. And that's what puts this little F here. The F stands for fake user. I know it's a little unintuitive, but Blender treats users as things like a, an attachment or a relationship to something else. So the action being attached to the item or the object is a user. And if it's not like the active action, then you're going to have to hit the shield icon to give it a fake, a fake user in order to make sure it is not removed from the file. Now, all we have to do is export the GLB. I will show you what happens on the web 3d site. So here you can notice I have all my different attempts at doing this. This is one of the reasons I have this project and it is freely available if you haven't already gotten it. Very easy to do iterations where you grab a GLB, quickly try it out and see what happens when you try to use it in a web context. So my latest iteration, we've got a link here. You can see the same setup. And if I click, I set it up so I have an on-click event. We'll show, look at the code real quick. I've got an on-click event where the one arrow will have it turn one way by playing one of the animations and the other arrow will have it turn the other way from playing one, playing the other animation. And it was really easy to set up and I've got a little script to make the, to reverse whatever animation I've played because that's usually what I need to do, at least in this context. So let's take a look at the code. So I'm not a huge fan of going through code on videos, but I do want you to at least understand the main steps so that you can duplicate it on your own. You can put an on-click event for your meshes. And this is just really easy way to test things out. So my on-click event is going to my play action function. And you can see my play action function here is just going to play any action that I name. It's going to play it by name and then it's going to, three seconds later, it's going to play it in reverse. And that's it. You know, pretty easy to do. Not a whole lot here. I'm happy to provide this function to anybody if you need it in Discord or whatever. And that is the reason that I said that it's important to name your actions, something that makes sense to you. Probably even better than rotate one and two, maybe rotate left and right, something like that. And then you can have a use effect that echoes out your actions so you can see which ones actually made it in all the conversion processes. But that's it. It's pretty easy. If you stuck around this long, let me go ahead and show you the caveat or the, the issue that I found with the parent and child relationships for this. All right, I have this super simple example here. We've got two objects, 
neither one are parented to each other or anything. So I'm going to select my parent and I'll say P or control P. What I want to do is set parent to object. That's going to work fine. Everything's going to work fine if you can just do set parent to object. What happens is if you have sometimes when you have to set parent to object, you'll see that it moves. You'd be like, you know, if you worked in Blender enough, you'll know that if you set the parent object with the transform, it's not going to move and it, you know, keeps everything aligned exactly how you are. But that's the, that's the component that's getting missed somehow when we go to a second animation or stored action in the 3JS web, web 3D stuff. So all you have to do is make sure that your, your object is set up so that it doesn't need a transformation between the parent and the child and your actions should all line up as you'd expect them to. One last thing, if you are interested in having this as a low code or no code option in the Web30 project where, you know, the, the one click easy one, let me know. I'm trying to think of a way to do that so people can line up clicks with actions and do things fairly similar like that. Or maybe even the way that you name things is how things get aligned. Uh, maybe you name a action as the mesh name click and it'll automatically put it into your on click event, something like that. Uh, whether it takes an add on in Blender or it takes uh, me doing it in the web 3d side and automating some, some extra code there. Let me know in the comments, what you think, how you expect things to work like that, what makes sense for your use case. And I'll take that into consideration for how I put it together. All right. See you next time.